Hi, it's The Wire, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, always, 1776.com, a free site. The presidential debate ended earlier tonight. As of now, it's the last one scheduled between current Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump. Let's talk about how it impacts a couple of bets. Right. The first is, who is going to win the election? The second is whether that candidate is going to win the popular vote. Let's talk about it, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just reveal my bias. Right, I'm not voting for either of these two. Right, I have some core values in every presidential election. Right, free speech, free markets, uh, private gun ownership, uh, peace through strength, uh, a robust, muscular judicial system. Right, I believe free speech should address civil rights. Those are the things I'm looking for. And here you have two people who believe in tariffs. Longtime viewers know I'm not a mercantilist. Right, I'm a free market capitalist. Right, I don't buy this idea that tariffs are a tax on foreign countries. Um, I don't buy the idea that you know, the tariffs somehow reduce the tax burden for Americans. I don't even buy economic nationalism, right? What Steve Bannon and people like that are pushing. So just understand, I'm not here trying to buttress some candidate. What I'm trying to do here is to win money on bets, on outfits like Polymarket, right? So let's answer both questions. Longtime subscribers here know I believe Donald Trump will be the next president of the United States. I believe he wins the election. The key question for me, because the odds are richer. This is really a second bet to enhance your rate of return. Is whether in a world where the Republican Party has not won the popular vote in a United States presidential race for several elections... Will Donald Trump win the popular vote, something he did not do in either 2016 or 2020? Right now, let's answer that question. I believe, yes, Donald Trump, based on what I saw tonight, is going to win the popular vote. Let me open by saying Kamala Harris exceeded expectations. Right now, let's keep this real. Right, she's a minority. And she's a woman. Right? In my opinion, both of those helped create the impression that even though she's been vice president for three and a half years, that she wouldn't be conversant on national issues. Right? I've been on sites where they openly call her, and these are conservative sites, I've been on Liberal sites as well. I've been on libertarian sites as well. On some of these sites, they openly call her a DEI hire. Understand, the standards are different for minorities and women. Right? Donald Trump can lose his temper in a debate. I don't believe a minority or a woman can and still be effective, be viewed as effective. Right? The one black guy who we had as President of the United States, was really one of the most even keel, even tempered candidates to ever run for president during my lifetime, Barack Obama. Right? Understand, the angry black man or the angry black woman, right, doesn't translate well in forums like debates. Again, I'm not saying that's how it should be. I'm simply saying that's how it is. 
right? These two candidates were dealing with two different standards. Now, let me just point out that the opening moment where Kamala Harris walks across the stage and walks up to Donald Trump and shakes his hand shows you what could have happened in this debate. She was magnificent. She came across as unafraid. That's very important, right? Minorities can't look overwhelmed by the situation, right? She looked comfortable, right? She starts off magnificently. She starts off exceeding expectations here, right? Let's also stop kidding ourselves right here, right? If it's a tie, she loses. She's already lost momentum coming out of the Democratic National Convention. She has to do better than Trump, who the press wrongly keeps emphasizing the, you know, aggregate vote totals instead of looking at the Electoral College, which is what matters. Trump is beating her in the Electoral College. So she needs to flip some states. She needs to show the world that she's authoritative, that she's likable, that she has vision, right? If she's a cheap imitation of Trump, then what's the point? She doesn't have Trump's international experience, right? She famously told Lester Holt in a debate when he asked whether she had been to the border. This is during her vice presidency. She said that she also hadn't been to Europe. That's not what voters want to hear. So just to understand, I don't want to give PC dumb any time in this video. She had to exceed the former president, right? Because we all knew coming into this, inflation is worse now than it was during the Trump administration. We face more foreign policy dangers, right? There are wars. Uh, Russia has invaded Ukraine. The whole situation with Hamas and Israel Right? We're at more danger now than we were at the end of the Trump administration. We all understand that. Certain metrics, the unemployment rate, were lower before the COVID problem during the Trump administration. So here you have a candidate who has not been president, who we don't know, who has not been giving unchaperoned interviews. And here she is in a presidential debate. It was make or break for her. She had to make the case. Right, let me point out, in 1992, Bill Clinton, one of the best politicians I've ever seen, was going up against an incumbent president. George H.W. Bush. And in the debates, Clinton made the case. It's possible. In 2004, John Kerry was on his way to making the case in a debate. I thought he had the debate won. Then at the end of the debate against George W. Bush, he gave the debate away by outing Dick Cheney's daughter. Right, so here's Kamala Harris, and she started magnificently. She has a relaxed body language. In terms of body language, she carries herself better than Trump. Now, both candidates made mistakes. Trump, of course, has a wider range of mistakes he can make because the public already knows him. He doesn't have to prove to you what his values are. You've already seen him. Right? Understand, certain memes out there, right, Trump is a racist, are openly contradicted by the fact that Trump, right now, according to polls, is getting about 20% of black men. 
right? His support among minorities is greater now than it was in 2016, right? We understand that. So here's where, in my opinion, things fell apart for Kamala to the point where, right, Donald Trump has a legitimate shot at winning the popular vote. Here are the mistakes Kamala made, right? Great beginning, looks spectacular. Understand the goal isn't to win a debate on the merits. That's not the goal. The goal here is to be viewed as more likable at the end of the debate than you were at the beginning of the debate. To have people who are on the fence say to themselves, you know, I feel comfortable with this candidate. I trust this candidate. Right? I believe in this candidate more than the other guy. That's the goal in a debate. So, the first mistake Kamala made was in just answering questions. Again, she's a minority. We've only had one person of color as president of the United States in its more than 200 year history. Right? Understand she's a woman. So when there's a big question hanging in the air, whatever Trump does, she has to answer it. Right? Black people in academia, if you're a person of color on a college campus, understand. You can't focus on white classmates, people you view as similarly situated, right? There's a question, you have to answer it. The first question's a whopper. Are you better off now than you were four years ago? Whatever Kamala practiced, her first word should have been no or yes. Give us the explanation. She could have said no and still won the day by explaining why the no is something that she's not responsible for. She could have said no and she could have then talked about how Joe Biden made mistakes and how she privately told the president that there were risks involved in some of the strategy. Right? She could have talked about how unexpected Russia invading Ukraine was. Right? And how certain things happened that were unexpected, that did not happen under Trump's watch. She could have said yes. And she could have focused on reproductive rights. Could have talked about the danger the Trump Supreme Court poses in areas other than reproductive rights, right? Understand, the important part wasn't giving a correct answer. The important part was giving an answer that came across as honest, that directly answered the question and to then give the context for it. So voters would think to themselves, I like how she explains things, right? I have my own ideas about gas prices, about inflation and things like that. She's aware of the problem and has a path forward. Instead, Kamala doesn't answer the question. Folks, it's a biggie, understand. She's trying to unseat a former president, a guy with a high floor, right? Donald Trump can roll out of bed and he has 40% of the American public. He has a high floor. He has a low ceiling, but he has a high floor. So understand when Kamala Harris did not answer that question, that was a problem. Right during the debate, too, they asked her whether she met Putin. She answered, maybe she misunderstood the question, 
that she had met Zelensky, that wasn't the question. Right? I felt that Kamala made a big mistake, particularly early on, not answering the biggest question that was asked in the debate. Right? Let me also point out, too, that Kamala makes another mistake. Kamala adopted some folklore that's already in the public dialogue that we know is incorrect. Right? Donald Trump, understand the Trump position on abortion. He is leaving it up to the states. If your state wants to give six weeks, if your state wants to give nine months to decide whether to have an abortion, Donald Trump's position allows you to do that. So you have states like Florida, six weeks, Minnesota, nine months, that allows the woman to decide during those two time periods whether she wants a divorce. Right? That's why... Some women are leaving the state they're in, moving to other states, states that have more time so they can get an abortion that's disallowed in their home state. Right? That's the Trump abortion position. Let me point out, too, that people know the Trump abortion position because Roe versus Wade was really federal constitutional rights, right? There's a difference between federal regulations and state regulations. Well, let me point out that when Kamala went down the road of claiming that Trump was going to sign a national abortion ban, she lost a lot of credibility. Folks, you cannot do that when you're a person of color or when you're a woman. Life's unfair, right? She's the underdog going in. I don't care what the polls say about percentage vote in the aggregate, right? Just understand, Trump is even doing well in Georgia. In electoral college polls, Trump's winning right now, right? Let's be clear on that. People are worried about Pennsylvania, a state with a Democratic governor, Josh Shapiro, because Trump is doing well. Some polls have him winning Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania has a, a lot of electoral college votes. Right? If Kamala Harris loses states like Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, folks, the election's over. Right? So understand. When she started talking about the incident where Trump said they're good people on both sides, as Trump himself said, that's been debunked. She should never have touched on such subjects. In other words, on the issue of abortion, she should have emphasized the need for a federal standard. She should have pivoted to the Supreme Court because it's relevant and should have said, look, you know, the problem is we have justices like Sotomayor who are thinking about leaving the court, right? And a, another Trump presidency would lead to more conservative domination of the court. We would have more decisions like the rollback on Roe versus Wade. That's what she should have said. She didn't go there. She went into the world of inaccuracy. Right? When you are the underdog making the case and you are a woman who's already facing a double standard, right? You have to outdo Trump to beat Trump, not match him. You can't come up with these obvious falsehoods and oversimplifications, right? So I thought she dropped the ball, quite frankly, on abortion. 
when she started fantasizing about what Trump's going to do. A better strategy would have been more civility. And I know it's tough, but Dr. King understood this. Michelle Obama understands this when she says they swing low, we swing high. Right? She should have treated Trump like JFK treated Nixon. Although even those debates had some sharp edges. Right? But understand, on the issue of abortion, she should have correctly summarized Trump's position. People on the fence would have thought to themselves, yeah, you know, Florida, six weeks, that's not enough. She could have called out people like Ron DeSantis. She could have said, you know, Trump is exposing us to radicals like Ron DeSantis. Right now, all I can say is, sure, DeSantis has a lot of supporters out there, but the people who don't like DeSantis would have understood that Kamala Harris had credibility and was accurately reflecting Trump's view on abortion. They also would have understood that the Supreme Court is a big issue here. Right? She could have even taken some shots on people like Clarence Thomas, talking about how we're in a world where Supreme Court justices are on trips with wealthy people and haven't been reporting it as dutifully as they should be, right? The party base would have loved it. She would have been taking shots on a conservative justice and linking it to Donald Trump, putting many people on the court, not Thomas, but of course others on the court who are very conservative, have given the court a conservative majority. Instead, she went a different route. And understand, in today's world, where there's YouTube, where there are countless, countless YouTubers, countless cable stations, streaming services, conservative media was able to have a field day saying this candidate who you don't know as well as the former president was telling you factually inaccurate information. Let's talk about what I believe is the biggest mistake she made. Right now, trust me, I'm aware of the fact that many people hate Donald Trump. Several times a week, I myself am in a email group where people are calling Trump all kinds of names, making all kinds of claims. But I need for folks to understand that he is a former president of the United States. There is a school of thought that former presidents deserve a certain level of respect. Right now, I thought Kamala started the night magnificently walking over to Trump and shaking his hand. That should have been the approach she took to the entire debate. Understand, JFK had a good friend, Barry Goldwater, uh, who was going to be his opposition in the 64 election, and they were planning a series of debates. Right? And I'm sure both Senator Goldwater and President John F. Kennedy were going to have a certain level of decorum, civility, Right? So even if the other person makes hard lines, right, you, the person of color, has to swing high. Right now, I thought, I mean, and this was shocking to me, right? And I'm not an innocent. I've seen my share of rough and tumble political debates, right, state and federal. Just understand, when she started making statements that she knew generals who considered Trump to be a guy not worthy of respect, and when she further started talking about Trump being critical of John McCain, now understand what I'm about to say, because she's factually correct here. 
But this is an argument that someone with more awareness would not make. I don't believe a Bill Clinton would ever make this argument. She was saying that Trump said that McCain was a loser. And she went further and talked about Trump having some kind of disdain for the United States military. Don't go there. Right? Don't go there. It's true. Trump did criticize McCain. I don't remember the exact words he used. But when you are accusing a guy whose running mate has military service, right? A guy who increased the pay of the military by more than 5% during his term. When you start talking about a president of the United States lacking respect for the U.S. military, you're on thin ice. Right, folks? That, that doesn't work. That's too disrespectful. Right? Just I don't care what Trump's doing. Seriously, at the debate, you're the challenger. You have to do better. Right? You're a woman. We've never had a female president. Right? We know Woodrow Wilson's wife was acting as president. Right? Not officially. Know your American history. Right? We also know a woman can clearly do the job. Right? Because globally you've had great female leaders throughout history. Right? Margaret Thatcher, for example. Um, Merkel in Germany, for example. Right? You've had females over some of the biggest economies in the world, right? But just, just understand that when you're a woman of color, when you're a woman or a person of color, right, you can't suddenly start making claims that the former commander-in-chief doesn't sufficiently respect the US military folks I'm just telling you that part of the debate didn't go over well with anybody on a military base right now that doesn't go over well with members of military families right you're the underdog this is the former commander-in-chief if you're gonna make a statement that he lacks respect for the military Right, folks, understand you need hard evidence and you need it to be more than just statements against John McCain. If you're going to try to make the claim that a former president isn't respected internationally, and that's the claim Kamala tried to make tonight, right, folks, you're going to lose a lot of people who were on the fence about you, who thought, let me find out who she is and then start hearing these jagged edged parts of the debate in which they already know Kamala is saying some things that aren't factually correct. Right? Even Trump said that the uh, statement about bloodbath was out of context. That if she talked about the next line he said after saying they're good people on both sides it would be clear that that story had already been debunked. Now, I don't know how Kamala could have prepared for the debate as long and hard as she did and then feel a need to mention debunked stories, feel a need to talk about Trump's level of respect for the U.S. military, right? Especially when Trump's military budgets were muscular, Right, folks, I know it's 2024. I know it's not 1960. But there is a group, and I'm in that group, that expects civility. Kamala could have won this debate without making accusations like that. She could have talked about funding levels. Right, she could have pointed out that the interest on the debt right now is about the level of the U.S. defense budget and that we need peace through strength, right? Isn't that what John F. Kennedy used to say? 
we need peace through strength. And that she could have then used it as a way to say we need to reduce the debt and we need to find a way to do so without reducing U.S. military spending. Let me also say too, in a debate, you don't have to disagree with the other person all the time. Right? Given that Kamala now supports a border wall, she could have said, you know, I agree with former President Trump on the border wall now. She could have even made the concession, and I know some people will say this would be a sign of weakness. No, it's a sign of strength. When someone can look at their adversary and say, you know, I believe now you were right on the border wall. Understand, Trump has a lot of supporters by default. Right? They're looking at him. They don't approve of his lifestyle. Right? You know, what's he doing involved with porn stars? All these NDAs. What's that about? Fixers like Cohen, as part of his uh, inner circle. You know, a lot of people have problems with Trump. But they just don't have a better alternative. Kamala could have provided them with a better alternative by saying, look, you know, I, um, you know, now agree with Trump on things like tips. She could have brought it up during her allotted time. You know, tr tips not being taxed. Then she could have looked over at him and nodded. I thought that's where she was going to go when she walked across the stage to shake his hand at the beginning. But she didn't go there. Instead, she tried to prove to you that she always supported fracking, which you know isn't right. Right, folks? There are videos online where she, in public venues, is talking about how she's opposed to fracking. Right? We know she didn't support the border wall. Let me say, too, at one point, too, in this debate, she said, look, you're not running anymore against Joe Biden. You're running against me. Now, people need to be careful here. You're the vice president to a president. Right? Unfortunately, ABC didn't do the job they should have done. There was no follow-up saying, hey, well, you know, tell us about what you mean by that. Right? You know, tell us where Biden's platform isn't the platform that you're running on. Right? There wasn't that level of scrutiny here. Now, let's talk about Donald Trump. Understand, Trump needed one dynamic to come through here to discredit the proceeding. Right? At a time where there are many people. Let me raise my hand. I thought the bank fraud case was completely ridiculous. There are many people who feel that there's been a lot of lawfare coming up, uh, going on. Understand, just the fact that we've come up with the word lawfare tells you there's concern that Trump is being treated unfairly. This whole January 6th thing is not only a non-starter for me, I agree with Trump that all these people should be pardoned, but let's go one step further. I'm not even voting for Trump. But let's go one step further. You know, if Dr. King, during the March on Washington, was giving a speech, and a few people jumped the fence and then decided to raid the Capitol, I don't know how Dr. King would be responsible for that. Here you have the added facts that Trump actually asked for more security. So here again, if I were Kamala Harris, I would realize, look, the Dems have a problem with January 6th. It's not that everyone in America approves of people protesting at the Capitol. But many people in America do feel that a group of folks wearing costumes, multicolored wigs, walking through the Capitol after an election upset with the way the votes were counted, is a valid expression of free speech. Right? They're not there with, you know, uh, an intent to kill. They're walking right by the guards. They're walking in. People are taking pictures. 
Folks, those are protesters. That's not a group of insurrectionists. Now, the point I'm making here is Kamala bringing it up was very bad. If she was going to bring it up, she should have talked about the fact that, look, she recognizes that there are free speech concerns. If she's going to bring it up and talk about insurrection and how, you know, the president somehow is responsible for whatever happened at the Capitol, meant that she was going to lose a lot of people. Right now, let me say, Trump, I thought, got a little ornery. Right? I didn't understand the idea of Trump feeling a need to talk about how, in his mind, the 2020 election was stolen. What's the point in that? He could have easily have said, well, this is a 2024 election that I'm trying to win. Um, Biden was awarded the 2020 decision, whatever I think about it, and I have moved on from that, and I'm just trying to run a good race here. Right? Instead, you could tell that this is one of those issues that Trump just couldn't let go of. Right? There was no need. You're, you're facing an opponent who has already lost her post-convention bounce. You're debating an opponent who's already made several mistakes. Right? Criticizing, <laughs> criticizing your love of the military. You know, mentioning January 6th. Talking about an impeachment that many of us consider to be politically motivated, talking about lawfare and completely ignoring the side of the argument that these were politically motivated prosecutions, right? Even Mitt Romney, who's not a friend of Donald Trump's, who got passed over for the Secretary of State position, felt that the Alvin Bragg case was politically motivated. Right, just, you know, there was no need for Kamala to mention that and to be antagonistic. Right, she could have distanced herself from all the controversy by saying, look, I don't agree with politically motivated prosecutions. She could have said, you know, I'm a prosecutor. I'm a former state attorney general. And I'm not sure. She didn't even have to throw Bragg under the bus. She could say, I'm not sure if I would have brought that case allay concerns, because that's what these debates are meant to do, right? The real goal of the debate is to allay concerns, to seduce people on the fence, allay concerns about the lawfare. Kamala didn't do that. So Trump needed a dynamic, because many of us feel Trump's already been treated badly, singled out for these ridiculous prosecutions, Right? Trump needed the panel to be biased against him. Understand, if the perception was that ABC, who Trump criticized before the debate, if ABC was unfair, then the entire debate was bogus. And Trump, who went into the debate, already doing well, already having survived Kamala's post-convention bounce, Right, Trump would have held serve, especially if it was obvious. And folks, it was obvious. Right, I'm a fan of David Muir's. Just understand, I thought it was ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I just thought it was ridiculous when they started fact checking Trump. Muir didn't have to say the line. I've looked through tape. And I didn't get the feeling you were being sarcastic when you said that you lost in a, lost by a whisker. Right? What was the purpose of that? They're going to be fact checkers after the debate. I thought his colleague, and I'm a fan of both of them. I believe her name's Lindsay. I thought her colleague was factually wrong when she talked about how there's no evidence that Babies can be killed, um, you know, when they're live, right? Folks, clearly 
she hasn't read what Tim Walls passed in Minnesota, right? If you've actually looked at the resolutions that have been passed, understand, when you give someone an absolute right to terminate their pregnancy at any time, that means that you could show up to the hospital. If there's a delay in you having your child, you can then decide literally moments before birth, you could decide, you know what, I'm going to terminate this pregnancy. I'm no longer with the father or we're having problems. I don't want to be a mom. I don't want to raise this kid. I'm going to terminate the pregnancy right here, right now. That's what giving a constitutional right that's unfettered does in that context. Understand, they not only fact-checked Trump, they did so incorrectly. Right, so just understand what happened here. You had three against one, they're calling it. The minute that narrative takes hold, Trump has won the debate. Right, people are thinking, wow, you know, the press looks biased already against Trump, and here it's three against one. Then you're going to see clips of the fact-checking on Trump while Kamala is saying things that are untrue. Right, Trump's going to pass a national abortion ban. Who's the genius who told her to pursue that argument in the debate? If she came up with that herself, then that's a tragedy. She gave away the debate and the presidency. Right? So understand, Trump goes one step further. Bad body language. He's slumped over. He's looking down. He's not as young and as fresh as Kamala Harris. He won't look at Harris while she's looking at him. In other words, she wins body language going away. But Trump on content wins the debate. On the baby issue, he actually quotes the former governor of Virginia. Right, Kamala stupidly is talking about how Trump has no respect overseas. Right, and Trump's able to quote Victor Orban. Right, because the statement is ridiculous. Kamala, at one point, talks about love letters Trump wrote to the head of South Korea, right? I'm sure many people were looking at that debate and thinking, well, great, South Korea has nuclear energy. I want the U.S. commander-in-chief to be talking with foreign leaders, right? We cannot try to ignore anyone who has nuclear energy. Any attempt to get that person to give up their nuclear capability is welcomed by a lot of voters. Right, so just to understand how this is going to play out. You're going to have a series of fact-checking. People are going to point out that some of the statements that Kamala Harris made were false, had already been debunked. The abortion statement is the biggest. Right, the idea that Trump, and keep in mind, Putin doesn't invade Ukraine until after Trump's out of office. Right, the, the idea that Trump isn't respected by foreign leaders, and of course it's given in some blanket way as if every foreign leader hates Trump, is just downright ridiculous. Right, it, for anybody who looks up Australian news, I know I'm a geek. But if you look up Australian news here on TV, it's actually slanted toward Trump. You have many countries that favor Trump. Right? Don't, you know, it would have been ridiculous for Trump to say in blanket fashion, and he did in different forms, that no one respects Kamala Harris internationally. Right? Trump should have been more nuanced himself. It's a big mistake Trump made. He should have said, look, she's hardly traveled internationally. He should have picked up on the fact that she didn't really answer the question on whether she had met Putin. Right? The people at ABC weren't doing follow-up questions. They didn't do the job CNN did in the last presidential debate. So, you add this up, and as this debate is analyzed, we're going to find out that Kamala Harris's good-looking performance had a lot of holes, 
right? A lot of inaccurate statements that Trump is going to have an opportunity to disprove, right? Understand how ridiculous it is. Kamala wanted to say that she's favored fracking since 2020. Folks, there, there are videos online. Just Google Kamala Harris and fracking where she's on tape saying she doesn't support fracking, right? We were all alive. If you're old enough to vote, you were alive during the Biden presidency in its totality. There's not any time during that presidency until recently where Kamala Harris came out against uh, uh, for fracking, right? Understand, there are videos of Kamala Harris talking about uh, equality of outcome, right? There are videos of Kamala Harris talking about defunding the police. The next few days are going to be an avalanche of the press discovering what's already on YouTube. The Harris people, right after the debate, and who knows if this was sincere, wanted another debate. What's the point of Trump giving her another debate if she's found to have made several factually incorrect statements during this debate? So add it up. I made an earlier debate, uh, an earlier video here, I said, Trump, I'm betting on Trump to win the popular vote. I want people to go back to that video and look at the comments. People thought I was being political. Folks, I'm not being political in the slightest. Right? Trump is a former president. Kamala Harris is a relative unknown. Just the fact that we're having a dialogue on whether she was the border czar shows you that people don't really know what she did during her vice presidency. Right? And so, just understand, if she's found to have made factual misstatements on big-ticket items like abortion, right, if she's going to you know, say that Trump was racist, right? You know, there are good people on both sides, right? You know, the claim that's already been debunked. If she's going to give conservatives and Trump supporters ample reason to question her credibility, then in my opinion, she has little to no chance of winning the presidency. In fact, she's that rear Democrat who has a chance of losing the popular vote, right? Something Hillary Clinton did not do, right? So let's just think it through. Understand, it's not what you think the night of a debate. It's how it lands as the debate gets researched, right? Trump, who had the poorer body language, who looks like he was upset with Kamala Harris and not as relaxed, who wasn't on his A-game like he was in that last debate against Biden, had the awareness to actually cite facts, correct wrong facts, right? On the issue of his statement that they are good people on both sides, he pointed out that that had already been debunked. He pointed out that his position is not that there should be a nationwide abortion ban. Right? He's not doctrinaire pro-life. Right? Understand, the Victor Orban reference was one that Kamala Harris should have seen coming. One wonders why she showed up to the debate trying to make the claim that Trump wasn't respected internationally. Right? This is a guy... <laughs> This is a guy with hotels all over the world, including in the Middle East, including in the Arab world. Right? You can fault Trump for a lot of things, but you can't say he's not international. I fault Trump for his mercantilism. The problem is Biden adopted it. Right? Biden adopted the tariffs. Kamala Harris supports the tariffs. Maybe Harris would have done better since she's changing her views in the lead up to the election. Maybe she would have been better saying, look, free trade. She could have called up a guy who worked on 
Jerry Brown's campaign. This, this guy, people don't understand. John F. Kennedy is one of his heroes. She could have called up supply sider Art Laffer and reached out to people like him, Stephen Moore, and tried to make the argument that we should have more open trade with China. That would have impressed me. She would have gotten my vote. Right? If she also backed away from loony ideas like taxing unrealized gains. But understand, she made a deal with the devil like Biden did. To copy Trump to copy things that were popular. Right, so as she's talking about a border wall, that doesn't do much for her because she's running against a guy who supported the concept longer than she did. And understand, I'm an immigrant. I don't support border walls. Nobody is trying to court my vote. Just, just food for thought. So, I feel the big winner tonight is Trump, because all he needed was a tie, and he got better than a tie. He has a situation where the perception is he was treated unfairly, right? That the, you know, that the people at ABC, David Muir and Lindsay, treated him like prosecutors are treating him in places like New York. Right? He was treated unfairly, and even with the unfair treatment, and with an opponent who was telling factually incorrect things, he held his own. Right, folks, I believe as this debate ages, we're going to realize tonight was the night that Kamala Harris wasted a great opportunity. Right, don't go after Trump personally. Right? Don't go after things that have already been debunked. Don't make up stuff about Trump warding an abortion ban. Don't try to take Trump quotes out of context. There's a lot you can attack Trump on on the merits. And you could have done so in a collegial, respectful manner where some Donald Trump supporters may have thought, you know, I like some parts of Trump's agenda, but not all of them. Instead, she left herself open to the line of the night when Trump said, I should send you a MAGA hat. Right, folks? That's not how you win elections. So those are my thoughts. I know people are going to say, you know, they're going to make stuff up. And they're going to say, in this country, it doesn't matter if you're a minority or if you're a woman. It matters. Right? If you're a minority and you're a woman or you're a woman, you understand you have to do better than the prevailing white male status quo. I don't believe Kamala Harris accomplished that tonight because she sawed herself in the foot by not answering questions clearly. Right? I could easily see a Bill Clinton ask the question, are you better off than you were four years ago? And Bill Clinton saying, no, we're not. We're still recovering from COVID. Right? Could have said, look, you know, uh, understand the money we spent getting us out of the COVID era, addressing the health emergency, has given us inflation. She could have used that moment to educate us and to express concern on inflation. Instead, she dodged the question entirely. You can't do that when you are a black woman. I know it sounds unfair. Life's unfair. Right? If I were up there debating Donald Trump, I would look at him and I would realize, wow, old white male who's already been president of the United States. I've got to do better than him. Right? Also, I've got to be measured here. I can't suddenly accuse this guy of hating the military based on some errant statements about John McCain. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. The bets I like are Donald Trump to win the election. Doesn't matter if I like him or hate him. Right? I usually vote libertarian in presidential elections. Right? Just food for thought. Right? Donald Trump to win the presidency 
Also, more importantly, you're getting better odds. You want to add this to your betting portfolio. You want the Trump to win the presidency. You also want to add, because this is that rare year, Donald Trump to win the popular vote. I encourage people to look up Nate Silver's recent polling. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.